Some patients have cloudy corneas, which require a corneal transplant. However, we've developed new techniques where we don't have to replace the whole cornea, so it's not a full corneal transplant. Although some people need full corneal transplants, a lot of conditions like Fuchs endothelial dystrophy or just endothelial cell loss and chronic swelling of the cornea only require to fix it, replacing the inner layer of cells in the cornea. The inner layer of cells in the cornea, they're, although only a single cell layer thick, they have a really important function. They're pump cells. So they're continually pumping fluid out of the cornea to keep it clear. And whether you have fuchs or endothelial cell loss for another reason, there's not enough cells around to keep the cornea clear. So it clouds over and blurs your vision. So an endothelial transplant is what we call replacing just that layer. So in contrast to a full transplant, your visual recovery is gonna be much faster uh, within a month to three months uh, versus a year with a full transplant. And it is more easily repeated. The terms we use for that procedure other than endothelial keratoplasty are DSEC or DMEC. DSEC is decimase stripping endothelial keratoplasty and DMEC is decimase membrane endothelial keratoplasty. They're both essentially the same procedure where we remove the dying inner layer of cells and replace it with a new layer. DSEC is a thicker uh, layer because it's that inner layer plus a little bit of extra cornea, corneal tissue attached to it, so it's a thicker transplant. And the reasons vary, but some patients would do better with that. We may recommend DSEC. Others we, and typically, will primarily try DMEC first if they're a good candidate for it. And that's decimase membrane endothelial keratoplasty, where we really truly are only transplanting those endothelial cells, an extremely thin additional layer called decimase membrane into the cornea. That's a much, much thinner graft, and that's why some people aren't a candidate for it, especially those with extreme swelling or different variables that it's where it would not be compatible. The reason we do that and try the thinnest graft first is because a higher percentage of patients can achieve 20-20 vision, uh, sometimes without glasses, but best corrected, meaning with glasses, a higher rate of 2020. So if they're a candidate for it, we usually start with DMEC, but DSEC is a great alternative and sometimes the only alternative for certain patients. Once your vision blurs enough and it's from the endothelial cells failing, and if you're bothered by the blurred vision, then that's an appropriate time to have a DSEC or DMEC. The disadvantages of waiting are it's just gonna continue to get worse. Your vision will decline to the point where you won't see much at all. And if you wait too long, chronic swelling can lead to permanent corneal scarring, and then our only option would be to do a full transplant. So you don't want to wait too long, for sure. Uh, the risks of the surgery itself, it has pretty much the same safety profile as cataract surgery or LASIK, which means it's extremely safe. There are risks, but they're uncommon. Uh, one unique risk to uh, DMEC and DSEC would be rejection of the graft. This is transplanted tissue from a donor, recently deceased donor. And so your body might recognize it as foreign tissue and try to reject it or mount an inflammatory response against it. These rates are fairly low. And if they happen, they're usually treatable with just steroid drops. Sometimes oral steroids are needed as well. And it's very rare, but occasionally you'll have a graft fail from rejection and the cornea will cloud over again. The good news is this is a procedure that can be repeated and you can receive a new transplant, a new graft of tissue uh, that should uh, clear and remain clear uh, for a long period of time. Endothelial keratoplasty, DMEC or DSEC, is generally a pretty quick procedure. It ranges on the DSEC side is usually about 30 minutes. DMEC is usually within 30 minutes as well, but DMEC sometimes, given the really delicate nature of the tissue and how thin it is and more difficult to handle, that can take up to an hour. Uh, but they're both uh, pretty quick, and it's done, of course, under anesthesia where the patient's really, really comfortable during the procedure. Uh, but it doesn't take too long. With endothelial keratoplasty, DMEC or DSEC, there is a thin layer of newly transplanted tissue in the eye. And so how does it stick to the inner layer? Well, we add an air bubble at the end of the case to help hold up the graft in place. And so that air bubble is holding the graft in place as those cells wake up and start pumping and they can stick themselves. So that air bubble, it affects you in a couple of ways. 
it's very hard to see through. You can't really see through it, but it will absorb in about four days. Also, since we want the air bubble to float up and support the graft, the patient has to lie on their back for one, sometimes two days, as much as they can. They can get up and eat and stretch, but for the most part of the day on their back and when sleeping on their back as well, lying flat, looking up at the ceiling is the correct position to be in. I'll tell patients within about four to seven days, the bubble will be gone. That's when you'll notice the big improvement in your vision, but it'll still be blurry. Maximum vision happens at about three months and you'll be ready for a new pair of glasses or laser vision correction after three months. But generally after about two weeks, patients are seeing decently well.